All right, the video feed should be up and running, so if you can see me and hear me, then everything is working exactly as it should. Now, I just want to take a quick moment just to go over the setup that you got there. Uh, I want to make sure everything's working properly, make sure you feel comfortable uh, with everything before we get the suspects in, all right? Now, what you're looking at now, this is the real-time video feed, and you've got the controls right in front of you that you can use to toggle back and forth between the two different camera angles. Now, this whole system is all touchscreen, so all you got to do is just, you know, touch whichever feed you want, and that's the one that's going to be displayed. So why don't you go ahead, take a quick sec, and just, you know, toggle back and forth, make sure everything's working properly. All right. Now, as long as this video feed is running, it's also being recorded and saved. In fact, it's actually recording right now in case you want to revisit any of this information later. Now, as soon as the recording stops, that's when it becomes available for you um, on the playback monitor that you also have in there. Now, this is where I'm counting on you, okay? This is where I really need you to utilize that playback monitor and carefully analyze these suspects, all right? See if there's anything, and I mean anything, that you happen to catch that I'm going to miss while I'm in here, okay? That's where I'm counting on you. All right, now, the video files that are going to be on that playback monitor, you have full control over, but you got to be aware that those files will not be available to you until we're done with each session and the recording stops, all right? So that covers all the, the tech stuff. Now, the case, all right, let's do a quick recap on the case here. So. Uh, Samantha Williams, age 31, found her mom, Paulette Williams, age 62, dead in her bed after being on in-home hospice care for about two months, okay? Nothing out of the ordinary there, seeing as though Paulette was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer. Now, part of the um, hospice care was for Paulette to receive these 30 milligram Oxycontin pills. Now, the problem is that the uh, medical examiner noted extremely high levels of Oxycontin in Paulette's system. Okay, these levels far exceed the 30 milligrams. Now, to top it off, the, uh, the hospice worker, a guy named Michael Schaefer, he noted that there were missing pills when he went to do his final count. All right, there was actually five missing pills of Oxycontin to be exact. Now, it's important to note that uh, Samantha and her husband, a guy named Elliot Jordan, who's age 34, um, they're the sole caretakers, right? So they're the only ones that are able to administer Paulette's uh, Oxycontin on a regular basis. Now, I did have a chance to talk with both of them uh, about a week or so ago, um, and things just aren't adding up, okay? They just aren't. Now, fortunately, they are being very cooperative, okay? Which is why they've agreed to come down here today and do the second interview with me. Now, since I spoke with them, um, I was able to subpoena uh, some documents and some records to hopefully you know, shed light and just uh, get a little insight as to what actually is going on here. And I actually did uncover a few things. Um, so I learned that Samantha has um, a lot of debt, all right, a pretty significant amount. Most of it's student loans, but it's pretty significant nonetheless. Um, I learned that her mom, uh, Paulette, has a life insurance policy for $250,000 that is payable to her only child, Samantha. Uh, and I learned that Samantha booked a one-way ticket to Costa Rica uh, for July of later this year. All right, now, given all of that, I think it's safe to say that foul play is absolutely a possibility here. All right, now, obviously, I'm gonna be the physical presence in the room, but I'm gonna rely on you, all right, like a lot, okay, because you're gonna be my eye in the sky, all right? You have a far better vantage point than I do, okay? So I'll field all the questions in here, but I'm absolutely gonna follow your lead, all right? So I need you to use everything that you got in that room to your advantage, okay? Because we have one goal, that's it, right? Solve this case, that's our goal, all right? Um, that's it, that's all I got. So I'm gonna bring Samantha in here first, uh, and we'll get the video feed back up and running in just a sec. All right. Okay, Samantha, we are recording. Uh, today is Saturday, February 19th of 2022. I am Detective Martin Ruiz, badge number 7621, and with me here is Samantha Williams. Uh, Samantha, I'm going to ask that you please spell your first and last name for me. Um, Samantha, S-A-M-A-N-T-H-A, -A -A Williams, W-I-L-L-I-A-M-S. Thank you. Uh, and now I do need you to acknowledge that this statement is being video and audio recorded and that you do consent to that recording. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, I know we had a chance to go over your rights in the waiting room, but I do want to remind you that those rights do remain at all times today, okay? 
Um, and um, also, you are by no means obligated to make this, uh, this statement, right? You understand that? Uh, yeah, I do understand, yeah. Okay. Um, the last thing is I know um, we spoke right, about a week or so ago, um, so I'm probably going to ask you some very similar questions. Um, if I do, just please go ahead and, and answer those, but this time for the record, okay? Okay. All right. So, Samantha, let's, um, let's just start with you telling me what happened. Um, okay. Uh, where do you want me to start? Wherever you'd like. Just tell me whatever you think I should know. Okay. Well, there's not really that much to tell. Um, my mom was on hospice care for quite some time, as you know, uh, stage four pancreatic cancer. And, uh, I woke up one morning and, uh, found her dead. Um, it wasn't really a shock or anything, you know, we were expecting it, but, um, we just didn't really know when it was going to happen. And Samantha, you're a substitute teacher, right? Um, yeah, yeah, that's correct. I'm working on my teaching credentials. So I'm assuming that's the reason that you were up so early that morning? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I usually get up about six. About six? Gotcha, okay. You can continue. Um, well, I, I woke up, I was doing my morning routine, I took a shower, went to make breakfast, um, then I was going to go give my mom her morning pill and... Okay, hold, hold, hold. Um, so around what time was it that you were giving her this morning pill? Um, 6.45. 6.45, okay. And then, um, yeah, what did you do after that? Well, I went in to wake up Elliot and uh, we called the hospice nurse. So see, this is where I'm lost. I don't understand. Why did you call the hospice nurse? Why didn't you guys call 911? Um, well, that, that was our protocol. Uh, we would gone over it quite a few times with our care team, and um, that was just what we were supposed to do. Now, um, the care team, uh, that's, uh, that's Michael Schaefer, right? He's the hospice nurse that's with that care team? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I called Michael, and he was there actually within about an hour. There were all these other people that came in um, to clean up everything else, clean up the body. Elliot and I, we just stayed in our room, out of the way. And uh, just for the record, Elliot's your husband, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. I know it's confusing because we don't share the same last name. And how long have the two of you been married? Um, just under two years. Just under two years. All right. Um, so why don't you why don't you tell me about the days leading up to all this? Okay. Uh, how far back? Why don't you go uh, go back to Monday, February seventh, since that'll put us about two days prior to your mom's death. Monday. Monday uh, was pretty typical. Um, I got up. I did my morning routine. I went to work. Uh, I went to the gym and the grocery store, and then I was home about 7.30. Um, <laughs> Elliot actually had already ordered Thai food, so uh, we had Thai food and then sat and watched TV for the rest of the evening. I went to bed about 10.30. 10. 10. Now, did you, um, did you give your mom a, a dose of Oxycontin that morning? Um, yeah, I do the morning and Elliot does the evening. So it's just the, the two pills every day? Yeah, about 12 hours apart, approximately. Anyway. Sometimes there's a breakthrough dose if she's really having like a lot of discomfort, but it's not normally part of the routine. Gotcha. Now, I did, um, did have a chance to, to speak to Michael, right, the, the hospice nurse. Um, are you aware that he had visited that morning? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Michael comes every Monday. I, I'm normally not there. I'm usually at work, so Elliot's the one that lets him in. So, seeing as though you weren't there, then it's safe to say that you, you really don't have any idea like what could have happened during his visit, right? No. Hmm. But, but I mean, I, I don't think that it would be anything different than a regular visit. Why? 
Did Michael say something happened that day? No, no, not at all. Um, no, I was just curious, that's all. So Tuesday, um, Tuesday, February 8th, how'd that day go for you? Um, honestly, about, about the same. Um, minus, I guess, the gym and the grocery store. I, uh, I was pretty tired, so I went home right after work. Um, Elliot and I just had some leftover Thai food, watched TV for the rest of the evening. And I went to bed, just like I always do. And um, that would have been around like 10, 10-ish, right? Like, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, give or take 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm going to assume that Elliot um, also, that same day, gave her um, her evening dose of Oxycontin, is that correct? Yeah. Okay, so, so seeing as though you didn't give your mom um, a pill the morning of her death, right? then it's safe to say that Elliot, right, he would have been the last person to give your mom Oxycontin, is that correct? Uh, right, like nobody else could have given her a pill, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Hmm. Any breakthrough doses that day? Um, uh, no. No, not that I remember, no. Now, Samantha, these, these five missing pills, do you have any idea how these five pills could have gone missing? No. No. I don't. Well, you are at least aware, right, that, that these five pills have gone missing. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what Michael said, yeah. Hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming that's part of the reason why you brought us down here. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a big part of the reason. Samantha, I, I can't seem to understand how five 30 milligram Oxycontin pills could have gone missing. Honestly, I, I can't tell you. I, I don't know. You don't know? I don't know. All right, Samantha, is there, is there anything else that you think I should be aware of? Anything that you need to tell me? Um, no, not really, no. Uh, but can I ask you a question? Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, are we being suspected of something? Samantha, foul play is absolutely a possibility here, yes. Right, that, that's why I'm here. My job is to try to figure out what happened. Okay, but as long as you're honest with me, then we're good, right? Uh, yeah, of course. Okay, good. So look, there's just one last thing um, that I want to clear up with you, okay? Um, first, uh, I need you to verify you, you still have some student loan debt, is that correct? Yeah, I do. Okay. And um, it's a pretty large amount that you owe, right? Um, about 105000 yeah. 105000 Wow. That's, um, that's a pretty significant amount of money. Yeah. Now... Prior to your mom's death, did you know that she had a life insurance policy for $250,000 that's payable directly to you, her only child? I, I did. I just, I mean, I didn't know about it until she got ill. So prior to all this, you had no idea that she had this, this life insurance policy? I, I mean, I'm, I'm sure she had something. I assumed she had something. But I didn't know any of the details of it, the amount, nothing. All right, what can, you, what can you tell me about Costa Rica? Costa Rica? Mm-hmm, yeah, Costa Rica. Um, you're probably referring to the plane ticket that I bought. Yeah, that's correct. What's that all about? Uh, 
there's just been so much going on. Um, I've been really stressed out with, and I, I was just uh, planning a little vacation um, for a bit once school was out. That's all. So that's why you bought the, the ticket for July? Now, um, see, the problem is you you bought a one-way ticket, Samantha, right? So, were you were you never planning on coming back? No, no, no. Um, no, it was a it's just a cheap fare that I found. Um, there's this app that tracks your purchases for you. Um, but it only deals in one-way fare tickets. It's for plane travel. Um, so I saw that t ticket and I bought that flight and I just was waiting for the right return flight. I just hadn't found it yet. What about Elliot? Two of you aren't going to go together? Um, no. Uh, uh, we weren't sure if my mom would still need care at the time. And Samantha, you you didn't think to mention this this earlier. I mean, this this seems like a huge oversight, don't you think? Um, I didn't see what it had to do with anything. It's just a vacation. It's just a vacation. Samantha, are you okay? Um, you don't have to bring any of this up to Elliot, do you? Possibly, yeah. Okay. Samantha, are you, are you sure there, there isn't something that you need to tell me? Okay. All right, Samantha, let's, um, let's give you a break. Okay, we'll get your husband in here, okay? All right. All right, the video feed should be up and running, so if you can see me and hear me, then... Okay, Elliot, we are recording. Um, I do want to remind you that the rights that we went over in the waiting room, they do apply at all times today, okay? Cool. Um, okay, so uh, today is uh, Saturday, February 19th of 2022. I am Detective Martin Ruiz, badge number 7621, and uh, with me here is Elliot Jordan. Um, Elliot, can you do me a favor and please spell your first and last name? First name E-L-L-I-O-T, last name J-O-R-D-A-N. Thank you. Uh, I do ask that you please acknowledge that this uh, statement is being video and audio recorded and that you are consenting to that recording, is that correct? Sure, that's correct, yeah. Okay. And um, lastly, I do want you to be aware that you do not um, have to make this statement, you're not obligated. Uh, you understand that, right? Understood. Okay. So, Elliot, um, yeah, I, I, I do want to get your take on things, so why don't you um, just tell me what happened? Um, I mean, there's not much to tell. Paula was on hospice, and uh, she was expected to pass away. And that's, uh, that's it? Um, I mean, there's really not much to say. It's just an unfortunate situation. All right, well, let's see if we can um, you know, maybe, maybe explore a little more here. Um, why don't you tell me what happened on uh, Monday, February 7th? Um... There's nothing out of the ordinary. Um, I woke up around 11 a.m. that morning. 
our uh, hospice nurse, Michael, he gets to the house on Mondays at noon. Um, let him in when he got to the house and um, he tended to Paulette while I took a video call from a client. Um, he left later that afternoon and uh, I continued to work. And you're a sound engineer, is that right? Yes. Okay, and you work from home? Yeah. Right. Um, okay, you can, uh, you can continue. Um, so after I wrapped for the day, um, I ordered some Thai food. Um, I hadn't eaten all day, I was starving, so I didn't wait for Sam to get home. But uh, she got to the house pretty soon after I finished eating and uh, we watched some TV. Um, she went to bed. Um, and then after she went to sleep, I hopped on video games online and played until about 2 a.m., something like that, and then went to sleep. Um, do, you, uh, do you normally go to bed that late? Yeah, usually later, honestly. Um, I have trouble sleeping, so I just kind of stay up until I'm drained. So um, I'm going to assume, right, you... Uh, you gave Paulette her uh, her dose of Oxycontin that evening, does that sound right? Yeah, I gave her a dose um, around 7. Um, that's routine for us. So, so based on this routine, you obviously gave her um, you gave her a pill of Oxycontin that, that night, right, February 7th. Um, I'm going to assume that you also gave her um, a dose on uh, Tuesday, February 8th that night. Does that sound accurate? Yes. Okay. Um, all right, so um, what about Tuesday? Anything out of the ordinary on Tuesday? No. Um, I worked on the track for most of the day for a client. Um, and uh, Sam got home around 5. We uh, ate leftovers from the night before and watched TV again. And then after she went to sleep, I hopped online, played video games, and did that the rest of the night. And that's it? That's it. All right. Um, so, so based on everything that you're saying, um, then you would have been uh, the last person to give Paulette a dose of uh, Oxycontin, right, prior to her death? Um, yeah, I suppose so, yeah. Okay. Uh, did either you or Samantha give, uh, give her any breakthrough doses on that day? No. Are you sure? I mean, as far as I'm aware, no. Okay, so, okay, so let's let's assume that everything that you're saying is is accurate. Um, can you explain to me how uh, five thirty milligram oxycotton pills could have gone missing? Um, the only thing I've thought about is that maybe the pharmacy messed up. Happens from time to time, right? Um. I mean, yeah, it happens. Um, you know, it's extremely rare, but sure. Um, but but see, even even if that were the case, right? That that still doesn't explain how Paulette overdosed, does it? I, I guess not. So Elliot, right? My my job is to figure out how Paulette overdosed. Okay, that's my job. So. Um, with that in mind, is there anything that you need to tell me? Anything that I should be aware of? I um, can't think of anything else. I think we've covered everything. Okay, you sure? Um, yeah, I can't think of anything else. All right, um, we'll take a, take a short break, okay? All right. I don't know about you, but it feels like both of them are hiding something. Samantha definitely feels off, and Elliot seems a bit too nonchalant for my taste. I'm going to bring Samantha back in here in just a sec. I want to see if I can pry some more information out of her. But look, before we do that, we really need to think about how we want to approach this. I think that if I put some pressure on her, she'll crack for sure. But honestly, I'm conflicted. Part of me also feels that I should keep playing nice. I don't know, maybe a, a calm approach may get her to trust me and open up more. 
But then again, if this is all an act, she might see right through that bullshit and use it in her favor. Honestly, I don't know. It's hard to get an exact read on her. Why don't you do some reviewing? See if anything helps guide how we should move forward. Maybe you can get a better take on things. And listen, take all the time you want, okay? I don't care if these two are here all day and night. When you're ready, you give me a call and you let me know how you want to play this. I'll trust your judgment. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Hey. Okay, so you want me to apply some pressure? See if I can make her crack? I like that. Not a problem at all. Let me go grab Samantha and uh, we'll get things up and running in just a sec. All right? Bye. This is a continuation with Samantha Williams. Uh, the date is still February 19th of 2022. Uh, Samantha, I, I'm going to be very straightforward with you. As it stands right now, everything, and I mean everything, points to you being the person that did this. Um, what do you mean? What do I mean? Samantha, you... You have a lot more debt than just the student loans. Um, yeah, but, but everybody has a lot of debt. Mm -hmm. Samantha, I'm going to run through some numbers, okay? You, um, you feel free to correct me if I get anything wrong. Uh, we established the, the $105,000, right, of student loan debt. Uh, you also have uh, $5,700 that you owe on your car. And you have two credit cards, right? Both of which are maxed out. And uh, that is $15,000 for those two. So uh, did I get those numbers correct? Does that sound accurate? Um, yeah, that sounds about right. Okay. Now, um, tell me, uh, what does that work out to in terms of a monthly payment? Right? I don't need the exact number. Just give me a rough idea. Thirteen fifty a month, maybe. So about thirteen fifty. Okay, I had um, I had fourteen, but we'll go with your number. So thirteen fifty, and you you live with your mom, right? I'm going to assume that you pay her something every month. Is that right? Five fifty. You, you pay her five fifty. Just to help with the groceries and bills and things, and Elliot contributes about the same. Mm -hmm. And salary, what do you, what do you bring in uh, salary-wise after taxes every month? Again, I don't need an exact number, just give me an estimate and that'll be totally fine. $2,100. About $2,100, okay. So, so see, Samantha, you have $1,900 in monthly expenses, okay? You're only bringing in $2,100 a month, right? That's leaving you with $200 a month, just, just $200 a month to cover things like going out, buying clothes. I mean, that's it. You have only $200 for your disposable income every month. Is that correct? Yeah. Now see, that's, that's really tight. It is. So see, Samantha, what this, what this shows me this shows me financial motive. Right, you see that, right? Financial motive. Now let's, let's switch gears just for a sec, right? So earlier, both you and Elliot stated that uh, Elliot, right, he was the last person to give your mom Oxycontin prior to her death, correct? Correct? Um, yeah, that's, that's what I stated, yeah. Okay, and, and neither you nor him 
gave your mom any breakthrough doses that day, correct? Correct? I, I did. You did. But, Samantha, you, you just stated that Elliot was the last person to give rocks. I mean, you just stated that. I, I am sorry. I, I was just confirming what you said that I said earlier. I did actually give her a breakthrough dose that day. And is there a reason you didn't bring this up earlier? There's so much going on. I honestly, I just overlooked it. I just remembered when I was sitting there in the waiting room. You overlooked it. You, you overlooked giving your mom a dose of Oxycontin literally the night before she died. You overlooked that? I know that it sounds hard to believe, but I... Yeah, yeah, Samantha, that, yes, that is very hard to believe. You are correct. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. Okay, so, so you, you were actually the last person to give your mom a dose of Oxycontin prior to her death that Tuesday night. Now, around, around what time did you give her this dose? I was having trouble sleeping, and I woke up. It's very rare for me. And I went to go check on my mom. And I saw that she was having a lot of discomfort, so... And how much, how much did you give her? Uh, the usual, uh, 10, 10 milligrams. And uh, Elliot, did Elliot give her any breakthrough doses that day, maybe before you got home? No. And how can you be so sure? I mean, it seems like you've, you've left out some very important details today. There's a, a chart on the refrigerator, and um, we write everything down, and there wasn't anything else given that day. Did you write your, um, your 11 p.m. dose on that chart? Honestly, I don't remember. I don't remember. Okay, so... So no, no additional breakthrough doses that day, um, unless, unless of course, Elliot, right? Maybe he forgot to? No. Um, no. No, Elliot's uh, super responsible. He would never forget something like that. Okay, Samantha, let's, let's lay this, this all out, okay? Um, you, you've got, Crippling debt, Samantha. Okay, you had a mom who was dying, right? You had, you had this $250,000 life insurance policy. And now, right now, now it's made evident that you were the last person to give your mom Oxycontin prior to her death, right? You gave her a breakthrough dose on top of the already scheduled 7 p.m. dose that night. Okay, now Samantha, I may not be the best detective in the world, but surely you can see how this makes a very strong case that you did this. You see that, right? No, I didn't. Samantha, you had to have done this. Samantha, you were the last person to give her Oxycontin. You just stated that. I didn't do it. I didn't. Samantha, are you, are you really telling me that you had nothing to do 
with the death of your mom. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. Yes, that's what I'm saying. I, I would never okay. do anything. What about accidentally? Okay, what about accidentally? Maybe, maybe we've been looking at this whole thing the wrong way. What do you mean? Samantha, I mean that maybe, maybe you accidentally measured that dosage wrong that night. Right? Think about it. You're, you're tired, right? You're stressed. Right? You got all of this craziness going on in your life. Samantha, maybe you just weren't thinking straight. Right? And, and maybe when you went to give her that dose, you measured it incorrectly. What do you think? Samantha, you did this. You know you did. <laughs> hey, look, even if this was an accident, right? The fact still remains that you did this. <laughs> so can you, can you at least admit, okay, that maybe, right? Just maybe, you accidentally measured that dosage wrong. <laughs> Can you at least admit that? <laughs> Samantha, Samantha, listen, listen. I am on your side. Okay, I am on your side. I know that you would never intentionally kill your mom. I know that. Okay, this, Samantha, this was an accident. Okay, but see, I need you, you to admit that, Samantha. So can, can you at least admit that, that maybe you made a mistake, right? You made a mistake, right? That's, that's possible, right, Samantha? I mean, yeah, I guess that anything is possible. Okay, now, Samantha, listen, I, I, need, I need a direct answer, okay? I need a, a simple yes or no, okay? Samantha, I am trying to help you, okay? I'm trying to help you here. Is it possible that you accidentally measured her dosage incorrectly that day? Yes or no? Yes, okay. Yes, it's possible that... Samantha, Samantha, listen. Okay, listen, listen very carefully, okay? Okay, remember, I am on your side, right? Okay, you and I, right, we both know the tremendous amount of stress that you've been under. We know, right? And, and we both know that it is very possible that you accidentally killed your mom. <laughs> Now, Samantha, Samantha, what I need, what I need you to do, right, is I need you to, to tell me the truth, okay, right? What I want to do is I want to make this easy for you, right? Samantha, look, we know this is what happened, right? After all, you were the last person to give her the Oxycontin, okay? So, so please, let's make this easy for you, okay? Tell me the truth. Tell me that you accidentally <laughs> killed your mom. Right? That's the truth, Samantha. Samantha, make this easy for yourself. Okay? Make this easy for yourself. You tell me the truth, right? And then you can put this whole thing behind you. Okay? You tell me the truth, and I will promise to do everything I can to make sure that you never set foot in prison, okay? But you have to tell me the truth. <laughs> Yes, what, Samantha?
Guess what? Samantha, listen. <laughs> listen, listen, I know that was hard. But what you just did, Samantha, you just made this easier for yourself, okay? You just made this a lot easier for yourself. Now, Samantha, Samantha, there's one, one last thing we need to clear up, okay? Samantha, stay with me, okay? Listen, I need you to tell me what happened to those five pills? I need to know what happened to those five pills. I don't know. Samantha, you do. I you don't. Do. Know. Yes, you do, Samantha. You do, and I need you to tell me. That you, tell me what happened to those five pills. I swear to you, I don't Samantha, know. Samantha, tell me what happened to those five pills. <laughs> I don't know. You don't know. Well, that, uh, that went better than expected. Now, I'm still having a hard time believing that she really forgot about that 11 p.m. breakthrough dose, though. But I guess we did get a confession, so this may be a done deal. Now, I know we still can't account for those five missing pills, but that confession should hold up. But to be honest, because of those pills, I'm still questioning whether or not this was intentional. Maybe Samantha's smarter than she lets on. Now, if it was intentional, we need to know if Elliot was in on it. This seems like the perfect plan that would benefit both of them. Now, he seems pretty well composed, so we really need to think about how we want to move forward with him. I can be aggressive and paint him as an accomplice or even the mastermind behind everything. See how he reacts to those accusations. Or, since he claims to have no idea what happened, I let him speculate on how things went down. Let him explain things on his own terms. See where that takes us. Why don't you look things over and let me know what you'd like me to do? All right, I'll talk to you in a bit. Hey. Okay, let's get aggressive. Yeah, we'll push him on being an accomplice or even being the mastermind behind all this. See how he reacts. I like it. All right, give me a sec. Let me go grab Elliot and we'll get things back up and running. All right, thanks. Everything is working exactly as it should. Now, I just want to take a quick moment just to go over the setup that you got there. Uh, I want to make sure. Okay, this is a continuation with Elliot Jordan. Uh, the date is still uh, Saturday, February 19th of 2022. So, Elliot, I had a, a really good conversation with Samantha. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. So see, I was wrong. I, I previously thought that you were the last person to give Paula Oxycontin. I wasn't. So she told you. She told you that she, she gave her a breakthrough dose during that uh, 11 p.m. check-in? Mm -hmm. And you, you had no idea about this? Uh, no, I just missed it. But Elliot, aren't you um, like up like all hours of the night, right? Like two, three in the morning, right? I mean, you, you didn't catch that? I was gaming. I had headphones on. I don't know, I just missed it. So is that what you think happened? You think you uh, just, just missed it? I guess so. Elliot, I need concrete answers. 
Okay, this this whole process can go a lot faster if you give me some some straightforward yes or no responses. So, did you notice Samantha get up around eleven o'clock that night? No, I did not notice Samantha get up at eleven o'clock that night. And just to be sure, is there anything that you forgot? Maybe uh, all of a sudden you you remember something? Can't think of anything. All right. Um, Financially speaking, right, you, you and Samantha are in um, like two very, very different situations, right? Um, you know, I, I did some digging around, and, and you have no debt. Is that, is that correct? I have, you know, regular credit card debt every month, but I paid off. Now, Samantha, right, she's not as responsible as you. I mean, she has a, a tremendous amount of debt. Right? You know that, right? Yeah, I'm aware. Hmm. So, I mean, it must be, must be nice, right, that... Um, that Paulette had this, this life insurance policy then, right? I mean, she, she can finally, right, pay off all of her debt. I mean, that, that's got to be a good thing, right? Uh, I don't think that she's thinking of it that way. I mean, her mom just died. It's not going to suddenly change because she got paid. That's true. That is true. Right? But, but then again, right, I mean, that, that's a matter of perspective, right? Because... Her mom, right, Paulette, she doesn't have to suffer anymore. You know, I mean, depending on your perspective, right, Paulette not suffering, I mean, that, that's, that's not a bad thing, right? All right, Elliot, I am, I'm going to cut straight to the chase. Um, Samantha has just confessed to giving Paulette a larger than normal dose of Oxycontin during that 11 p.m. check-in. Yeah, I know. You know. So now, Elliot, the question is, was that intentional? What do you think? Uh, I don't think that Sam intentionally hurt her mom. So then you think this was an accident? That's not what I said. All right, Elliot, I need you to help me out here. Okay, help me out because you know Samantha way better than I do, right? Okay, it is now a fact that Samantha was the last person to give Paulette a dose of Oxycontin, right? That's a fact. It is also a fact that Paulette overdosed on Oxycontin. Okay, can you see where I'm going with this? Because based on these two facts, Elliot, it was either intentional or it was an accident, right? There's no middle ground here. So Elliot, what I need is for you to tell me what you think. Sam didn't hurt her mom. See, Elliot, that, that's not what I'm asking you. All right. Look, I'm just going to tell you what I think because apparently nobody wants to tell me the truth today. All right, so I'm just going to put the, the, the pieces together myself, okay? So I think that this whole situation is a win-win, all right, for Paulette and for Samantha. Heck, man, even you. Right? Because, look, Samantha, right, and by extension you, right, you two are, are saddled with debt, right? And Paulette just so happens to have this life insurance policy, right, that can wipe all that debt away, right? Because right? if Paulette goes, then so does the debt, right? And, and Elliot, let me tell you, man, I am no stranger to being a caretaker, okay? I understand that is a tremendous amount of work, okay? Right? And, and then having to see... Paulette suffer day in and day out? I can't even imagine that type of burden, right? On top of everything else that you two have going on in your lives? So, so how does one get from under all this misery, right? That's the question. How, how do you guys get from all, out of all this misery? How does that happen? And this is where I've been giving it a lot of thought, Elliot a slightly larger than normal dose of that Oxycontin, right? That'll do the trick, right? See, here's what I think. I think Samantha, I think she took those five pills, right? I think she crushed them up, sprinkled it in, uh, in that breakthrough dose, right? She gives it to Paulette, all right? And then Paulette gets to go easily, right? Peacefully, no more suffering for her, right? And then comes the money, right? You guys can use that money, right? Pay off all that debt. Maybe start a whole new chapter in life, right? You guys can travel, maybe start a family, right? Who knows, right? Who knows? I'm going to tell you what else I think, Elliot. 
I think you were the one who planned this whole thing. I'm sorry, what? Come on, Elliot. Right, you and I, we both know there's no way in hell Samantha could plan this. This was no accident, right? You forced her to do this. I didn't force anybody to do anything. It's ridiculous. Did the two of you kill Paulette? Okay, I'm not saying that you did this maliciously, but did the two of you kill Paulette because you simply wanted to end everyone's suffering, right? That's what happened to those five pills, Elliot, right? That's what happened. No, that's not what happened. All right, well then what happened, man? I took the pills, all right? That's what happened. You took those five pills. I took the five pills. I needed help sleeping. I can't sleep at night. Thought it would help. End of story. All right, and why did you not bring this up earlier? Because it's embarrassing. And I did not think it was going to pan out to be such a big deal. You didn't think that would be a big deal? No. All right, all right, Elliot. Um... Jesus Christ, man. Okay, if, if what you are saying is actually true, right, then, then what you're telling me is that this whole thing is an accident. Is that what you're telling me? Look, me and Sam have been under a tremendous amount of stress, all right? Especially Sam. If what she told you is true, then yeah, it's got to be some kind of accident. She would never hurt her mom. Ever. And, you know, if she did make an accident, she's going to live with that for the rest of her life. So take that into consideration when you move forward. All right, she doesn't need any more suffering. She's gone through enough. Anything else? Are we done? We're almost done. One last thing, Elliot, one last thing. On, on that Tuesday night, um, after Samantha went to bed, Tell me who can account for your time. Nobody. Nobody? No. Not even the, the people you were gaming with online, right? You're, you're gaming with none of those people, they're going to account for your time? None of them? I do random matchmaking. I don't know anybody, they don't know me. You do random matchmaking? All right, Elliot, is there, is there anything else that you want to add to your statement today? No. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. All right, we're going to take a break, okay? You know, I thought we were going to get an actual confession. Now I don't know what to believe. You think Elliot really took those pills himself? I don't know. I need you to review everything thoroughly. See if you can get a clearer direction on how we should move forward. We have a few options. We can charge Samantha based on her confession. That should absolutely hold up in court. We can also charge both of them if we feel there's enough evidence to support that. As for Elliot being the sole person responsible, I'm not too sure we have enough evidence. But. If you feel he's still hiding something, I can absolutely charge him. I'll try to find a way to justify it if that's the route you want to go. Or maybe we don't have enough evidence to solve this. Maybe we've got to let them both go. I don't know. I'm going to place this decision in your hands. Take your time. I trust you'll make the right decision. Just make sure that you choose carefully, okay? If we make the wrong decision here, it's both our asses. All right, you give me a call when you're ready to wrap this up. Hey. Okay. Um, yeah, I will, uh, I'll let them both go free. All right, let me get them back in here real quick and give them one last chance to see if there's anything else they want to add to their statements, and then, then I'll let them go. All right, give me a sec. Let me go grab them, and we'll get the feedback up and running. 
Okay. Bye. Okay, um, this is a continuation with Elliot Jordan and Samantha Williams. Uh, the date is still February 19th of 2022. Um, first, I know that this has been a really, really long day for both of you, so I want to thank you both for your full cooperation. Yeah, I really course. appreciate that. Great. Um, the good news is the two of you are free to go. Um, I just wanted to get you back in here, just give you one last opportunity to see if there's anything that either of you wanted to add to your statements. You, you have the opportunity to do so. Um, no, I think we're good. Yeah. You're good? Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, again, thank you guys. Um, really made this process a lot easier. All right. All right. You guys are good to go. Let me get out of here. up. I think we may have just let someone get away with murder. That doesn't sit right with me, you know? We did our best though, right? We did our best. All right, we've been here long enough. Thanks for your help, okay? I appreciate it. Take care.